When you think of a solid, the first picture that usually comes to mind is something like this. Many solids have the ability to deform reversibly under stress. This means that if you apply a force on them, it's going to change their shape or their volume. And as soon as you stop applying the force, they go back to their initial state. This is what happens with our block of metal. But if you tried to stretch it, you wouldn't see any clear deformation. That's because metals are not very elastic. But with this rubber band, things are going to get much more interesting. So, why are some materials more elastic than others? The answer lies in their microscopic structure. Solids are dense arrangements of atoms and molecules bound to their neighbors by intermolecular forces. And these forces are responsible for the cohesion of the object. To deform a solid, you must go against them. At room temperature, they're very strong in metals, but rather weak in soft matter. You are probably very familiar with soft matter already, because it's all around us. In cosmetics, for instance, like lipstick, shaving foam, toothpaste, or even in food. Take jelly, for instance. See how when it stops wobbling, it goes back to its initial shape? That's elasticity right there. Being easily deformable, soft matter is the perfect playground for studying elasticity. In fact, some objects are so soft that putting them in contact with a liquid is enough to deform them due to surface tension. This ability to deform solids through capillary effects is called elastocapillarity. It may not sound like much, but it's actually relevant to a lot of industrial applications, and many phenomena are yet to be understood from a fundamental point of view. So today, we're going to meet Kerry Delnocchiveris, who is going to show us an experiment about that. So Kerry, um, we said you were working on elastocapillarity. Uh, could you walk us through the basics of elastocapillarity? Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Um, so I guess the first place to start is when you don't have a soft surface. So let's, let's imagine that you have, let's say, a water droplet sitting on top of, a, of the table. And you know you get this beautiful spherical cap. Okay? Yep. If I do the exact same thing and I put uh, a droplet of oil, let's say, on the surface of water, you know that it will deform the surface underneath and you get a droplet that looks something like this. That's what you see in your kitchen, for instance, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and now what's really fun is to try to understand what goes on in between this regime. So when you don't have a liquid substrate or a solid substrate, but just a very soft substrate. In that case, what happens is that you might have something that looks more like this, where the surface tension is enough to deform the soft material in these regions. This is this is really what elastocapillarity is all about, and 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 this is this is a very interesting area of study that a lot of people are involved with, and 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 we are as well. So the way we try to tackle this problem is by using, uh, for example, very thin films of a soft material. So the material we use are uh, would be, for example, the same material that you would use to make the sole of a shoe. Okay, okay. but we make a very thin film. We put a droplet on that, and then we look at how that droplet deforms that film. Mm -hmm. Another geometry that we work with a lot is uh, thin elastic fibers and liquid droplets. So you have a soft fiber and a viscous liquid? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's a typical, typical geometry that we use, and the, the length scales that we're interested in are uh, are very thin fibers, so let's say a, a, a two micron to twenty microns in in in, in diameter. So uh, hair, uh, of which I have none, is about a uh, hundred microns in in diameter. So we're talking about you know let's say one twentieth or, or so of the diameter of a hair. So really very thin fibers. So you probably need a microscope to see what's going on in your experiments. Yeah. And I guess that uh, given the fact that you're so small, uh, gravity does not play a role. Yes. And that's a, that's a really crucial point. We want to turn off as much physics as possible so we can really focus on the physics that we're interested in. Mm -hmm. So by going to small length scales, we cannot worry about gravity and focus just on elasticity, capillarity, and try to sh understand the interaction between those two. Okay. So you're tiny droplets, how are they attached to the, the fiber? Are they on top? Are they uh, around the fiber? Okay. How does that work? So that's actually a, a, a really important question. Um, and in the case that of the droplets that we're looking at, the, the, the fiber sits on top of the droplet or, or embeds itself slightly within the droplet. So the way to think about that is that if this is our droplet right here, our fiber might sit on the surface, something like that. And that's purely for, for wetting reasons. Wetting is the ability of a liquid to stay in contact with a solid. When a drop of water is placed on a very clean glass slide, it spreads immediately. When deposited on a slab of plastic, the same drop remains stuck in place. 
and when we try to set it on this chemically treated surface, it curls into a ball and runs away. Clean glass is very hydrophilic. Liquid water likes having the largest contact area possible with the glass, hence the spreading of the droplet. This is called total wetting. Plastic is less hydrophilic. Water is going to try and make a small contact area with the solid. This is called partial wetting. Our last surface is super hydrophobic, meaning that it repels water. In this case, there is no wetting of the substrate by the water. Here, we had a tiny bit of liquid on top of a large solid. But it also works the other way around. A wettable solid particle wants to remain under the surface of a liquid, while a non-wettable particle tends to stay above the surface. So you described um, the materials you used and the interactions between the solids and the droplets. Um, can you tell us more about the actual experiment? Basically the idea is quite simple. What you do is you take two posts, you put a fiber across that, you put a droplet on top of that, you bring the one fiber in with respect to the other one, so you slacken the fiber. The fiber of course is very soft, mm -hmm. right? it bends very easily, and we look at how the fiber interacts with the droplet. So you have a, you have a fiber, you have a droplet, and, and the experiment that uh, my student Raphael Schulman does is he grows the size of that droplet and as that droplet gets larger and larger, it applies a larger force onto the fiber and it starts bending the fiber mm. and eventually it starts winding the fiber. Okay. Then you can get an image that looks something like this, which when we saw this, we were just completely stunned by that. I mean, you know, nature is doing this for us for free and we're just watching this happen. So oh. this is really neat. There's another uh, fun trick that you can play, which is to try to remove the droplet itself, and that's what you see in this image. So here we've taken the droplet out, and you're left only with that coil itself. So this is like a way of having nature make this tiny little coil for you. Okay, so this was a really cool example of uh, an experiment with a fiber and a droplet. Uh, what other setups do, do people come up with? Okay, so there's, there's lots of really beautiful work being done on, on very similar things. So, one of my favorites is, uh, is, is this recent work by uh, Hervé Electro and, and co-workers. And this is uh, the same thing that you see when you have a, a spider silk uh, in, in a web, mm -hmm. have a droplet on there, like a dew drop, and what you can see is that the, uh, the droplet completely winds the, the fiber up. Mm -hmm. Very similar to the work that we did, one of the main differences here is that the fiber is inside of the droplet, and so it, it buckles inside, and that's what forms this shape. Okay. Uh, and, and the droplets are much larger. And then another example that's one of my favorites is this work by uh, uh, Benoit Roma and José Bico and co-workers, where they did this uh, incredibly beautiful study. So here you have a bunch of uh, fibers that are dipped in, in, in water. You lower the level of the water. I was seeing the interface, right? Yes, lower. exactly. Okay. So this is the, the same thing that you might see uh, when you come out of the shower. Well, you might see, I don't see it. But what you have here is that these fibers bundle together um, and you get this beautiful hierarchical structure. And actually the, the shape of these um, uh, fibers is reminiscent of something that was sent to me very recently. So I have a movie here Oh, so I can cool. show you. Um, I think they're having, they have two fibers and um, they're, um, they're dripping water uh, from the top, and it's a PhD student named um, Romain Labbé, and he's doing this uh, oscillation of the oh. level of the droplet here. That's beautiful. Amazing. So you have um, tension in the fibers, yeah. so elasticity, and you have uh, water which is dripping, so you have capillarity as well. And of course, the other thing that's playing a role here is, is, is gravity, yeah. uh, as it did with the other, the other work. Uh -huh. In all these studies that we were just discussing, the droplets are, are millimetric in size, uh -huh. Uh -huh. not small enough that you can turn gravity off. Okay. So do you have um, other experiments that you do in the lab with the, all these fibers? Yeah, there's one more I can share with you, which is just preliminary work, and we don't fully understand it yet. So okay. this, is, this is work done by my uh, graduate student, Adam Fortas. And what he, what he does, he takes a, a bath of a liquid. He's got a little bubble. Mm -hmm. The bubble floats to the top, of course. Mm -hmm. And then what you have to imagine is you have this flat surface of the liquid and this bubble poking out through the top. So there's this thin liquid film. He takes a fiber, brings that fiber into contact with the part that's sticking out, and what happens is the droplet starts to wind uh, the fiber. And here you can see what happens. And again, this is just 
crazy to us that this is happening. Mm -hmm. It's this beautiful process. We don't fully understand it. Here you can see the end of the fiber starting to wind in there. And watch what happens at the very end, because this is, this is really cool. Oh, do you see that? So what happened there is that, I mean, it's too fast for the camera mm -hmm. to catch it, but what happened is that the bubble burst. Mm -hmm. So at first, you're winding this fiber along this spherical cap, right? Because that's where the, where the bubble is. The fiber is winding around, the bubble bursts, and then it has to sit flat. It was on a sphere and then it has to go to a flat surface. Exactly. And that's what gives rise to this sudden sh change in the shape that you see, that you see right there. And do you understand what's going on right there? So I would say this is one of the few things that we do understand yeah. about, about this project right now yeah. is why we go from this shape to this shape because it's purely geometry. Uh -huh. And I can, I can show that to you easily with a, with a demo. Yeah, sure. So here we have a basketball. Okay. And let me take some tape. And I'll need, I'll need your help with this. Okay. So what I will do is, if you can rotate the ball, but not too quickly. Okay. So this Good. is like pretending the, the rope is the fiber, and of course the ball is the, is the, is the bubble. I'll have to make sure that this is going around nicely. Uh -huh. Nature does this much more beautifully than we can <laughs> do it ourselves. And here we go. So let's stop right there. Okay. And if you could take some tape and just tape where my fingers are. Yeah. Perfect. And do the same thing on the other side. And that just ensures that we're not cheating in any way. Now, of course, what happens when the bubble bursts is that we go from a shape like this, which is, you know, the fiber on a spherical cap, mm. to it becoming completely flat on the surface of the of the liquid. And what you can see is that if we do this, you can accommodate that flat surface oh. very beautifully. Okay. So, so we understand why this happens, uh -huh. but there's also lots of things that we don't understand. Oh, okay. So I think it wraps it up. Thanks a lot for being part of the Lutetium project. Uh, it was awesome to have you. Great. It was an absolute pleasure to take part. Um, here's a, a picture. It's actually one of my, my favorite pictures of the the fiber winding around the droplet for your picture book. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot, it's perfect. And that is how simple experiments can give us more insights on complex natural phenomena and enable us to design new industrial applications. If you enjoyed this video and don't want to miss the upcoming ones, please consider subscribing. And if you have anything to say about the video or its contents, you can leave a comment below. Mm -hmm.